Why is Stonewall Jackson here? This isn't any old officer we're talking about. By this point in the battle, Jackson is really serving as second in command of the Confederate forces. Because James Longstreet is not on the scene, that responsibility is essentially falling to Stonewall Jackson. What is he doing out ahead of his own troops, which we left back at the Bullock Road? Why is he here? And so Frank gave us the most practical answers in terms of needing to find uh, a route to cut off the Union Army from the U.S. Ford, in terms of needing more time, well, needing to make up for time, needing to get his men moving as quickly as possible, and also needing to know what the Union Army is up to. And as he stands here with his uh, reconnaissance party, Jackson is going to answer some of those questions. He is impatient, and that's part of why he's out here. But as he stands here, well, sits here on his horse, he'll be listening to hear what's out in front of him. About three or four hundred yards through these woods is the Union Army. And what do you think he hears? Shovels. Shovels. All right, so he doesn't hear Route 3. He hears the Union Army entrenching. He hears them cutting down trees, prefer preparing some sort of defensive line. How does that work for his plan? He wants to get it started quickly. He wants to get it started quickly. It works terribly for his plan. He doesn't want a prepared Union Army. He doesn't want an entrenched opponent. He wants to keep up his momentum. So he wants to keep rolling. So impatience, for one, I would say is one of the reasons that Stonewall Jackson is out here. But a lot of folks get to that more, more specifically. No, Beth, why is Stonewall Jackson out here? Couldn't he have just sent someone else? And besides the suggestion that other people are far more expendable than Stonewall Jackson, uh, which is in some parts <laughs> true, I think it's important to understand who Stonewall Jackson is. So to some degree, that impatience is part of Jackson. You heard Frank make an allusion to mystifying, misleading, and surprising at the very beginning of our tour, because that's a maxim that Stonewall Jackson lived by. Always mystify, <coughs> mislead, and surprise your enemy, if at all possible. He likes the element of surprise. Do you trust a staff officer to come out here and look for absolutely everything that you would be looking for? Do you trust them with the details of your plan? Do you trust anybody with the details of your plan? Even A.P. Hill got a pretty broad directive. So some of it, to Stonewall Jackson, is the element of secrecy, wanting to keep up uh, as much, well, really keep as much to himself as he possibly could. Another uh, is getting a little more internal to Jackson. You'll notice that even on his deathbed, Stonewall Jackson does not believe that he's going to die. He thinks that he still has a purpose on Earth. But Jackson sees the world, much like some people that we all know, in a very black and white sort of sense. So he is somewhat fatalistic in his views. And so he has always said that he feels as safe on the battlefield as he does in bed. Really? But to Jackson, I think he meant it when he said it. That he believed that if God willed that he would die, then he would die, whether he was laying in bed and something fell on top of him, or whether he was on the battlefield and somebody shot him. And so, he does perhaps feel as safe in bed as he does in battle. So, leaving his own front lines, perhaps he doesn't feel as insecure as maybe he ought to. But in any case, as Jackson gets to this point in the road, perhaps it begins to sink into him that this isn't the best place for him. Perhaps one of his group suggests it to him. Or perhaps it's simply the sound of those federal troops making a warm welcome for him and his troops that tells Jackson that he needs to get out of this road. And so he stops, listens, and then turns right around and heads back down the road. And as these men form up in the woods, they realize what almost all soldiers know. From the beginning of time to yesterday, soldiers hate to fight at night. And they hate to fight in woods. And Stonewall Jackson was going to have them do both at the same time. So they're on a very heightened sense of urgency. They know they're outnumbered, and they know if Jackson continues to push, it's because there is something to be exploited. But it also comes at a price tag, because they're going to be the exploiters and the ones who could get hurt. So as they stand there in heightened awareness, and Jackson disappears into a rabbit hole, a little path called the Mountain Road, 
with the locals named, even though there's no mountain anywhere near it. <laughs> Theoretically, it attaches Fredericksburg to the east, to the Blue Ridge Mountains to the west, and thus the route to the mountains, the mountain road. Nobody saw anything, nobody heard anything, because you are deep in woods in 1863. And it's obvious from the shooting, because when you can see AP Hill, you can hit nine out of 10. In this group, only five bullets are gonna find flesh. Jackson has a 50% chance of walking away without a scratch. Only three people are gonna get hit. Jackson has a 70% chance of walking away without a scratch. Jackson is gonna catch three of the five bullets. Hmm.